wonder, what in the world did we talk about in this podcast last year? That's what we're going to talk about today. Advice is like castor oil, easy enough to give, but dreadfully uneasy to take. Josh Billings. Hi, this is Jill from the North Woods. We're having the third anniversary of this podcast. And so like I've done the other previous years, I'm going to reflect a little about what we talked about last year. Maybe highlight some of the books and opinions and advice that we've discussed. And maybe you want to reflect on to see if you followed through on some of these things or if you haven't. So let's jump in. The first piece of advice comes from episode 106. That came out on September 20th. We talked about the culture of fortitude and found out that a lot of places around the world admires when people are strong, are stoic, and show grit through tough times. So we talked about a variety of words around the world that highlight that word. The funny thing is, is I was on a boat going to an island where I was going camping, and the fellow on the boat sitting next to me had a boat, and he called it Sisu, but that was the Finnish word for grit. And so we had a nice conversation over to this island talking about that word and what it means. Grit resonates with people. It's that stick to that toughness in tough times that will help us be better people and help us get through situations that aren't always great. On September 26th, we talked about the one-page marketing strategy. The one-page marketing strategy talks about how you don't have to have a deep dive to create a marketing plan. It can be very simple, very easy, and it gave a straightforward plan about how you can go through and develop your own marketing plan, come up with your own ideas. Heck, it even gave me some ideas about what to do about this podcast. By the way, tell a friend. On October 17th and October 24th, we talked about how to think like a lawyer. There was some really good advice from this book, How to Think Like a Lawyer and Why, about how you can split information and do a deep dive. Kim Wheel talked about how it's important to make good decisions and think hard about certain ideas when you're trying to analyze a situation. And then in the next podcast, we talked about the BICAT method, B-I-C-A-T which is a framework for making great decisions. When you're buying a house or starting a business or anything, it's a deep dive into critical thinking. On November 7th, I liked the idea of the get into the gear. That talked about the book, Five Gears, How to Be Present, Productive, When There's Never Enough Time by Jeremy Kubisek. Sometimes vice feels like go tough, be at top speed all the time, or relax, treat yourself, But this book talked about a formula for being in a variety of gears and which gear is the right gear to be in, high speed, low speed, for the right situations. I thought that was very insightful. On November 28th, we talked about Bill George's book, True North, and the book itself was good. I just love the concept of having a true north. In my mind, in some ways, I like it better than having a goal or having a plan, even though those things can be very important. I think when you know your true north, you can get plunked down into any situation, plopped into any adverse condition. And based on your true north, you'll know which direction to go in. By following a compass instead of a plan, you'll be able to be agile. And when the unexpected happens, you'll know, because you know where your true north is, which way you should go. And that was really thoughtful to me. Knowing our true north can help us in every situation, (laughs) particularly when things don't go according to plan. We talked about unlocking the future you and how to analyze the future you. This happened in December 5th and 12th. And what's nice about this is we want good things in our future. We maybe even can imagine what we think our future will look like. But the truth of it is, we don't know what our future looks like. We don't know what's going to happen. But there are ways that we can make those future plans happen better, be more attuned to who we are, and follow in the path that's going to help us have that future life we think will make us happy, but to ensure we'll be happy regardless of what future life we will have. December 19th started our holiday podcast where I talk about movies. And in this case, it was It's a Wonderful Life. 
And what struck me about It's a Wonderful Life, why I've always loved this movie, is he was a guy who had a dream. And you know what? His dream never happened. But what did happen in his life made him an important person to everyone in his community, changed the nature of this town, because you got to see what the town looked like without him. And in the end, he was truly happy. So I think it goes along with the true north. When you know where your true north is, whenever you have a change of plans, just like George Bailey, you'll be able to ride the wave and go in the right direction. On January 9th, we started off the year with the book, One Word That Will Change Your Life. And he talks about coming up with one word that is your mantra, your focus for that year. Now, the interesting thing about it is, is they recommend not picking two words. I almost find it essential to pick two words. So I have done that. And my word for this year has been health. And so the idea is that anytime I ask myself a question about what I should do today, the answer should be health. I also picked a different word for work. Because now I went from consulting to being the owner of a product, I am now giving myself the one word as being total ownership. I'm not looking to anybody else. This is my project and I own it. So every time the question comes up in my brain, what should I do? Total ownership comes to my mind. On January 23rd, we talked about the mini habits for weight loss, and he talks about becoming the person who loses weight. You don't want to think about how you want to lose weight. I wish I'd lose weight. Why can't I lose weight? Instead, you want to think about the kind of person who loses weight and then becoming that person. And then identifying, even if you haven't gotten there yet, as the kind of person who loses weight. That kind of talk will help you through whatever situation you're in. You're not just trying to lose weight. Be the person who loses weight. At the end of February and beginning of March, we talked about the Lazy Genius book. I'm not going to go into a deep dive about it because there's a lot of different ideas in there. But what's great about the Lazy Genius is she talks about having a quality life, but still doing things in the easiest way possible. Sometimes, and I don't know if you're like me, you'll read a book and they will give you advice and it will be things you can't do, things you don't have time for, perfectionist life that you can't possibly live out. And what's nice is that the lazy genius recognizes that we're all human beings with competing events in our life. And sometimes we just want to sit down and watch TV. And she understands that. And her advice um, in the Lazy Genius Way book is great. We talked about on March 20th and 27th, there was a great book that talked about funny in the workplace. It's called Humor Seriously. And it gives you some good guidelines about how to be funny in the workplace, but not offensive. I thought the advice there was great. I think we could all use a little bit more funny in the workplace. And so I love this book and I love the fact that I get to work with funny people and it's a lot of fun. So the book is validated in my mind that we could all do a better job at being funny. April 3rd through April 24th, that was a big series, but that book really struck a chord with me and it was called The Gift of Maybe by Alison Carmen. The reason this book struck a chord is because I didn't recognize myself as someone who was adverse to change. And then came my opportunity to change jobs. Is this the right way? I was going to stay in this job forever. I knew what my week looked like, what my life looked like in this old job. And getting a new job wasn't unknown for me. And so this book spoke to me at the right time. And I think it has great advice about how we can open that door to possibility. Look inside and see what it is that's going to happen and then make better decisions. I talked about a fantastic book on May 8th and May 15th that was called The Selfish Romantic. And while I don't think it's selfish to just realize you're a part of the dating partnership and that you need to have your needs met as well as the other person, but she had great advice about how to date, how to evaluate people, and dating's not your thing, how to get back into that world again how to approach dating in a new mindset that won't bring you down, make you self-conscious. I thought the book was really fantastic. And no, I haven't dated yet. On May 29th and June 6th, we talked about making happy memories with The Art of Making Memories by Mike Viking. 
And he does a great job not only talking about how we get memories, but how we can make more long-lasting good memories. And when we look back at our life, we have warm memories. We think of good things, not bad things. And how can we work on building those memories so we have long-lasting happiness? June 12th, I talked about the book Ask For It by Linda Babcock and Sarah Lashover. Sorry if I massacred your name. But the idea is that we don't ask for what we want. And then we're lamentful. We're sad. We're angry that we didn't get what we want. And so this book changed the order of my life. I hope to do more with asking for what I want in the future. And then it goes hand in hand with the book we talked about on June 19th, which was The Great Money Reset by Jill Schlesinger. The great thing about Jill is that she is such a pragmatic, empathetic person. She realizes how people want their dreams and they don't realize how to get there. So she's able to look at people's dreams their great money resets. I mean, we're going to start something new. We're going to move to a new place. We're going to take a new job. We're going to retire. We're going to unretire, whatever it is, and help you build a plan around making your dreams possible in a very logical and realistic way. I think people get caught up between, I want my dream, and then they just do it without a plan. Or they get so wrapped up in planning, they never go for their dreams. This book tells you how to get there. On July 3rd and July 10th, we talked about getting out of the procrastination mode, and that came from The Art of Procrastination by John Perry. That book spoke to me years ago, helped me out a lot of ways, and if we can just address the root causes of procrastination, maybe we'll be able to get out of that mold and start actually accomplishing the things we should be accomplishing. On July 17th, July 24th and August 1st, we talked about the power of inconvenience, and that came from the book The Comfort Crisis by Michael Easter. And whether it's health, whether it's our day-to-day lives, whether it's trying to get the things we want to get in life, we have to realize that we have to break through the comfort. This isn't the other book where we're talking about things that make us scared, worried, where we're afraid to move on. Sometimes our problem isn't as drastic as fear, and sometimes it's just as easy as being comfortable. And if we break out of our comfort zone, if we tackle the things that we're trying to tackle, we can get the things we want to do, and we'll be able to realize improvements in our lives just by giving up a little bit of comfort. And at the end, we talked about the power of being purposeful in our lives, and that came from the book Things That Matter by Joshua Becker. The Joshua Becker book is a fundamental part about how we can find purpose and getting away from just the material things, the things we think of as being happy, but maybe don't bring us lasting happiness. By having purpose and focus, we're going to find our true happiness and learn how to best live our lives. So my challenge to you is think about something that we talked about in the last year. And see if a revisit to that topic, maybe you thought it was a good idea and you forgot about it. See if you can focus on that topic again and break through whatever challenges you're looking to break through. You can tell me what those challenges were. What episodes resonated with you? What things did you try and did they work or did they not work? I'd love to hear what your experience on the last year of advice has done for you or maybe hasn't done for you. Everyone, thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Please remember, as always, you can email me at jill at startwithsmallsteps.com. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you think of this podcast. I'm also interested to know, too, are you interested in how I review these books? Do you wish I would talk mostly about the books? Or do you wish I would talk about the topic of these books, but go in other directions? You can just let me know. I'm happy to hear from you. I'm also on Twitter. And you can reach me with all the information on the show notes. And remember, the steps towards getting to the next year starts with small steps.